After being eliminated from the Professional Surfers World Tour, Bottle now faces an uncertain future. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old or 13 years old and you know it's kind of all I know and something in the back of my mind saying hey look you know maybe it's time to kind of branch out. That's my profession and whatever's in here has kind of come from my career you know surfing and I've been so lost lately. I've been online actually checking out I'm thinking about maybe being a fireman. <laughs> for the future, which is a totally different career path. Done a bit of lifeguarding, but that's on the beach. Maybe a fireman's a totally different kind of thing, and who knows? The tour continues without bottle. Round six is at Trestles, California. Jordy is clinging on to the number one spot, but breathing right behind him is a major threat. Kelly Slater, determined to win his 10th world title. Jordy's strategy needs to be perfect. I think his head's fine. It's, it's exactly where it needs to be. We're, we're working on winning heats, and that's what puts events together. There's going to be some slugging out here. It's everybody seems to perform their best at the most high performance level at Trussell's. like a boxing match, there's tons of rounds to go, and I think if he just paces himself, he's, he, he'll, he'll do fine, he'll end up where he wants to be, you know. Hey guys, right here with Jordy Smith, he's got number one on the back of his jersey for a reason. Serving from his heart, you know, and rather than just trying to be too technical about it. Jordy's taken it so well, he's been so relaxed the whole year, he's just been having fun, and he's number one in the world. It's an early heat, and Garth watches Jordy from the beach. Wait a second. Big blow. He's going to do a massive air right here. Watch this air. Whoop. <laughs> Ten. Can't do anything more than that. With his display of super progressive surfing, Jordy wins his heat. Uh, this is Superman. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Good job. Cool, thank you. Nobody this week has seen anything like it. Congratulations on that heat, Jordy. Was that a Superman or an Airwalk? I think it was just a Superman, I guess. All right, well, you are the Superman. Jordy Smith making it through with surfing like that. Why not? Congratulations. Thanks, bro. If you come to the final, you're not going to have a sissy fit on us and cry in this time, are you? <laughs> We're in trestles now, mate. Jordy is now in the quarterfinals against Bede Durbage. Ten minutes to eh? Ten, uh, no, about, about eight minutes now. You see those last couple waves Slater got, how far out front he got, was yeah. just able to come around. As he heads out, he sees Kelly Slater winning his heat. <laughs> Durbage starts strongly. He scores a seven. All right, here we go. This is actually a good wave right here. Jordy responds with a 6.6. He's trailing Durbage. Right. He just got to go surfing. Jordy's next wave is a 5.27. It's not enough to catch Durbage, who goes on to win. With this defeat, Jordy's number one ranking is now threatened. It was a little unfortunate. I broke two of my best surfboards in the round before the quarters, so I couldn't really deal with it at the time. I just had to take a brand new board out for my heat. Never surfed it before, and yeah, you know, I don't, I don't look back and go, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. You can't, you can't help a breaking board, you know. Jordy's biggest challenger turns out to be the nine-time world champion Kelly Slater, who wins the Hurley Pro at Trestles and takes over the number one spot from Jordy. If Jordy hopes to regain it. He'll have to do it at the European events coming up. Connor is at the Oakley World Pro Junior event. Showed up in the dark this morning and I couldn't even tell if the waves were right good and paddled out and like eight waves set came and everyone just got like blown out of barrels and I was just kind of freaking out. A little fat kid in a chocolate factory or something. Connor is surfing in the most important heat of his young competitive career. This is the heat of his life. 
If he wins it, he progresses to the quarterfinals, further than he ever has before. This is the event every junior wants to win. Connor could be in the running. There are barrels on offer, but they won't score highly without being finished. Connor is in rhythm with the ocean and takes the best waves, finding a number of barrels. With surfing like this, he wins the heat hands down. By far the funnest heat of my life. I wasn't even thinking about my heat out there. Like, there, there's so many good waves. I've never gotten uh, gotten to surf waves that were barreling like every wave. I mean, what more can you ask for? Awesome job, quarterfinals. Thank you. I'm so stoked. It was amazing. Like, well, dream come true. As long as I get a couple of good tubes, I'm stoked. That heat, that heat in your life, or what? But probably. <laughs> Like most surfers, Connor loves to surf in the barrel. Ever since I was young, I've always liked surfing bigger waves and getting barrels, my favorite thing to do. From as soon as I could figure out how to get in the barrel, all, that's all I wanted to do is surfing. I used to just go out, like, go out at home and, and take out a piece of crap board and go find the nastiest little shore break I could find and I'd pull into closeouts all day long. Didn't care if I'd broke myself or my board or anything. I just like love getting barreled. With his future as a pro surfer now in the balance, Bottle is uncertain what to do and where to go. He's actually enjoying life here on Tahiti. I just love to maybe find myself a little Tahitian princess and just live over here just live off the land and just be some kind of weird hippie eating seeds and coconuts my whole life and catching fresh fish. Bloody starting to consider it. The great thing about surfing now is that there's so many different paths you can take. You can chase big waves, you can chase photos. You can be a free surfer and, and still make a great living and, and Bottle is one of the guys that fortunately probably has the tools to do any of those things. I think he's just got to decide in himself. He's a pretty indecisive guy at the best of times. You don't really want to be under 10 years old here doing this, you'd chop a digit off for sure. You can just live so simple, kind of a bit envious, a little bit jealous of the way they live, and at the same time feel really spoiled. It's amazing. It's like they're kind of smarter than all of us, you know, we worry so much about material things that we don't need when we could just live off the land and be super simple. I'm getting pretty deep here, but it's pretty humbling and brings you back down to earth. You know, surfing, it's just, you know, Mother Nature providing, you know, just energy coming off the ocean from thousands of miles away and I made a career out of it for free. All I had to do was jump on a surfboard and made the life that I got right now standing on this palm tree in Tahiti, so it's a pretty damn good life, that's for sure. When is all this going to end? Hopefully not soon. I'm, it's weird, I'm kind of growing up a lot more and I'm just, I don't know, loving, loving life a lot more. It's weird, it's starting to love simple things in life and realising what's important and what's not so important. You get used to it. Obviously you've got to perform for that to, for that to happen. <laughs> in Bali, at the World Pro Junior, Connor is heading out for his quarter-final heat. This is the furthest he's gone in any competition. But the break at Karamas refuses to cooperate. Still lots of time left. It's not just the conditions that he's up against, but also fierce competition from the other surfer. There comes something. Connor's last wave closes out around him and he loses the heat. Bummer. He obviously needs to um, learn a few more things, you know? How do you feel? Fine. Stoked. I made the quarterfinals. Yeah. Uh, you did really well. Heat of your life yesterday? Yeah. That was worth the whole experience. Oh, man. You're, you're only 17, dude. You're, you're going to have so many of these mountain man heats. And this heat right here, you might learn something that helps you win the next one. Yeah. 
it's never fun to lose, but every heat you lose, you just gotta try and find out, you know, what you can take out of it. I think you learn more from losing than winning, really. So this is our stock. We've got big boxes of product. I mean, orders are coming in. Orders are being shipped out. I think we're running out of medium. You know, it's a business up and running. Really stoked. After attending to business, Marlon is heading to Portugal, where he's decided to enter a minor qualifying event. If he wins it, this would allow him to enter the Rip Curl Pro World Tour event. It's a chance for the new businessman to decide whether he still has the competitive hunger to be a pro surfer. With nothing to lose, Marlon decides to go for it. In tune with the waves and surfing at the top of his game, Marlon performs superbly and goes on to win the qualifying event. Having this success in competition, I felt that again, which was good to win the trials. After months away from the tour, the win stokes a competitive fire in Marlin and also earns him a place at the main event. He will be competing in the Rip Curl Pro against some of the top surfers on the tour. Suddenly, Marlin finds himself back among the pros. Marlin Lipke, former top 45 Whoa. surfer, winner of the Rip Curl Pro trials. The question is, does he really want to be there? Next time, Bottle heads to Hawaii to take on the infamous North Shore. I'm just going to try to you know, spend as much time as I can out there and nail one of those big ones. And Jordy and Marlon face off against each other in a World Tour event. 35 seconds to go, and the only thing that can save Marlon Lipke right now is a two-wave set.